It's the OCG Fam Show, and we're talking about CO2. Yeah. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome to the OCG Fam. Got something on here. Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? What do you got going on in your growth? What's going on in your life? Last day of the year, new decade. Although we should talk about that, the 0001, when does the decade really begin? We don't need to talk about that. That's just stupid. Let's get back to this. What do you got going on? We'll talk about that in the comments. And speaking of the comments, I got a comment. That's the, the thrust of today's show. Uh, Trevante Bell says, would you want to apply CO2 with nectar for the God's line? No, no, I wouldn't. I might, I might. Yeah, yeah, I would under certain circumstances. But let's talk about that. Let's talk about yield because I think when you're doing CO2, and correct me if I'm wrong, let's talk in the comments about CO2 in general, but when you're using CO2, you're using it to get yield, to get a bigger, bushier, more. Maybe not better, maybe just more, which seems like kind of a quixotic pursuit to me. Why would you do that? But it's a hobby or a profession where doing that is a, an interesting pursuit, I suppose. But I think if you're doing that, you might not be using nectar. You'd probably be using some sort of synthetic along with that CO2 to just put on that weight. If you're using nectar, I think a lot of times, I think a lot of us, I think most of us are doing it because of uh, quality. And I mean, you know, what does quality really mean? You know, that, that Zen in the Art of Motorcycle maintenance guy went nuts trying to figure out what quality, what the word even meant. But I think we all intrinsically know what we're looking for, you know, flavor, aroma, jar appeal, just that expression of the, of the plant to, to really bring something out that we can enjoy, you know, uh, enjoy, but also just the, the, the aesthetics of it. So for that, I don't know if the CO2, but, but I think it's worth a try. I, Trevante, I think you should try it out. So um, in the new year, I wanna talk more about that, some other things, but right now what I wanna do is show you this video where Scott talks about if you're using CO2, how you might use that along with the Nectar line. And then, uh, you know, watch that, we'll talk after. Now, well, the, the CO2, do you need more? Well, yeah, because traditionally base. when you pump CO2 into a room, it, builds that plant's metabolism, right? It makes it want to consume more, wants it to grow more, sure. and produce more. Uh -huh. So usually your inputs need to increase to follow that hunger need. But then why would the PPM need to increase? Why wouldn't I be feeding more often and bring it well, down by 150, 200 thing to... Well, the question here is, does the soil level go up with the input level? Not at all. Yeah, yeah, this, yeah, Again, we still want your plant to eat what we're giving them. Sure. So if you're putting in 1,600 parts per million, you're left with eight. They're not eating it all, so now your efficiency has slipped. Sure. They still look fine, and as my email back to him is like, they look fine right now. Yeah. But there may be a, a potential of lockout coming soon. So I would be reducing those PPMs, not aggressively. I wouldn't be going from nine to four hundred on right. flushing. Uh huh. But I would be doing a periodic flush to get those eight and nines back down to the you know three to five hundreds. Sure. Because right now they look great. Soon they might start showing you lack of nutrition because they're going to get too. Um, the PPMs are going to build out. So you're certainly giving them more nutrients, but you're not trying to maintain a base level with your slurries. You want it to drop down, go up, drop down, you go up, the just same like you always action, But you might need more input. But that. you still want that ant same three to four hundred range in your soil. If it starts building up, it's still the same result. It's like cocoa feeders that want to feed at five, seven to six, one, uh -huh. because that's what we're told. Right. The downfall of seven, five, seven, six, one, we're still not available below six. So we still encourage people, even though this is what we've been told, uh -huh. we have to do it this way to make sure our calcium is available. Well, even though we've been told to feed them higher rates of nutrition rate, when the yeah. CO2 is being injected, yeah. We don't want that to be across the board in the root zone because the root zone is still a fragile place that harbors bacteria, fungi, protozoa, all the living organisms. And if we start letting that number get too high, they start to struggle, the fungus starts to struggle, and then everything just kind of starts shutting down and you'll run into a toxicity issue. So this is not an issue of if I'm at eight or nine, I'm in the red zone going to 12, and then I have a problem, it's an issue now it well can be an issue you're going to see the results of the issue today will show in a week yeah but if you make sure you're in that four to five with this excess feeding uh, you'll you're not going to run into any problems but you don't want to build up your soil ppms to balance because of co2 they'll eat if they want it if they don't it builds up and then when it builds up too much you start to have issues okay so build up your input keep your eye on that slurry and then just kind of maintain that if I'm new to doing CO2, would I maybe do anything different with my flushes? Would I maybe use some one-shot? Would I maybe do some things to, to as, a, as a net to, to, 
to keep me in until I get it sorted out. Um, I mean, if you're new to CO2, hopefully you've already grown, so you know, what, well. so you know what you're looking for and uh, you know how to adjust. But usually with CO2 is, I, I encourage people to, if you're injecting CO2, don't pump it in at 2200 parts per million because now you're going to have to feed them at an alarming rate and all yeah, the issues okay. that come along with that. So start your, your CO2 lower and bring it up slowly over time. They only need to really eat aggressively for X amount of weeks. Sure. Outside of that, it just makes them overproduce and that stresses plants out. Okay. So this would be no different than if I discovered I had a, a especially hungry genetic. Yeah. It would just be that kind of situation yeah. where I, this guy's eating up. I need to feed him more, but I don't want to have anything in the pantry there i still want to drop down to yeah you want it okay. to be a healthy pantry but yeah you know you don't want to store excess because the plant isn't going to really use that when it needs food now because when it gets built up then you need the microbial field to break all that stuff down and if you're force feeding at that rate to keep them healthy on the inputs the microbes aren't living and thriving because they're being fed so much that they can't keep up with the feed okay what do you think of that what do you think of what I talked about at the first, about the quality thing, about the nectar thing, about the, you know, you tell me what we're going to talk about. We've got a whole year ahead of us. Let's have some fun. I love you. I'll see you next year. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you next year.